This is Andy Perrault for Boxing Social in association with Betfred and I'm delighted to be joined by the WBA president Gilberto Mendoza. Gilberto, how are you? Fine, great. Nice to be with you today. Obviously, we've just uh, seen you reward Regis Progre with his WBA world title. Just talk to me about what it's like to see somebody receive that belt for the first time and the, the happiness that it brings to someone. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's part of uh, what we do. You know, we, um, we try to get the best fighters being here uh, and having, especially him, you know, he has a very special history. You know, he's going out to fight to determine who is the best super lightweight in the world. I think that's one of the things we, we try to do as an organization. You know, um, boxing has changed a lot. And boxing um, these days, you know, you give more value to your belt whenever you have the best fighters all around that are considered, you know, the the best like a consensus from everybody and uh, him being the number one in the division also makes obviously me happy and makes me um, makes it all be a proud and honor what did you make of his fight against Carol Relic now we've had time to reflect well um, well it was my first time to see him live I was surprised with him by his victory his uh, past victories of course when he defeated Amir Iman, uh, I was shocked the way he, he could fight because one of the things I see in him, besides the passion and the determination, is um, it's his um, his abilities. You know, uh, he's an old school fighter. That's uh, the type of fighters I liked. Um, I know he he likes um, Roberto Duran, and that was one, one of my favorite fighters. So he goes in there, he know how to handle the distance. He has enough abilities to. Um, to have a better defense, but he, he takes a risk. And the way he handled Kyrie Rillick, it was really amazing because uh, Rillick is a, it was a proven fighter. You know, he comes from a good background to the amateurs. And in, in the pros, he, he, you know, he showed up. You know, he showed what, what, what he was capable of. And basically, you know, he, he broke him down easily. And that, that's what tells you what, what a good fighter he is. Obviously, he's getting ready now for the Josh Taylor fight, unification fight for, for Josh's world title as well. What are your thoughts on that one? Well, it's going to be a tough fight. Josh has, has another level. He said it himself in the press conference. He believes that's, just, that, that's a one and two fighting, and that's what we organizations want. You know, out of that fight, um, I don't know exactly which, which, which type of strategy will be, but I know we're going, to, we're going to have the best fighters with the best abilities in the ring. Um, predictions, I can't, <laughs> you know, obviously. Uh, I should say neutral, but um, both had advantages. I think uh, Taylor has a better chance from the outside, and, and Regis has a better chance from the inside, from the middle distance and in the short distance. But we, I don't know. You know, he both have proven. You know, they can change the strategies in the ring. So I don't know what happened. You know, the capabilities and technical technicalities is going to be good. You know, I could compare this fight with uh, Linares and Lomachenko, which was a high technical fight. Which that's what I'm expecting out of it. A lot of speed and power in both. What are your thoughts on the possible destination and location for the fight? You know, would you mind seeing it in Scotland? Obviously, Bridges would like it to be in America. What, what are your thoughts? And maybe if the curveball was thrown out there, like Saudi Arabia for World Boxing Super Series? Well, uh, regarding the, uh, if you ask me about the atmosphere, which one I like of the best, you know, English. You know, any UK country who has the best atmosphere for boxing, you know, it is a, it is a matter that you know, we have this challenge with the United States. You know, I'm international. I don't have that point of view. Like Luke shares that everything has to go through America. America is the biggest market of all, of course. And, uh, you know, fighters have to penetrate in this market and try to get some eyeballs that way with them. But uh, if you, t you know, like a good, good fight in a country like, like England and London or Scotland, you know, you always have some, something extra. You know, I've been involved in this business since I was a little kid. And I've been in Vegas. I've been in the Madison Square Garden, which are great experiences, but I have never had one like, like the English fans do or any UK fan do. Now, you just mentioned Madison Square Garden. Obviously, this weekend, Anthony Joshua makes his US debut defending his three world titles against Andrew Ruiz Jr. Again, what are your thoughts on this fight and Anthony Joshua's US debut? Look, 8,000 people <laughs> travel here. It's like exporting, you know, quality. I think, uh, you know, I think Anthony has all the tools to be uh, the, the best the best fighter in the heavyweight division. I think he has a big shot of defeating Dante Wilder. But, uh, you know, Dante Wilder is always a dangerous, uh, you know, opponent because, he, first of all, he has strength and he also has uh, the determination. And that's what makes fighter, you know, mind, the mindset of a fighter can change a whole lot. And that's one thing I've seen Dante. With all my respect, I think that, um, that Joshua is a little bit above the level because of the position. You know, now Dante, you know, fighting Fury, you know, it, it almost level it, but I think uh, defeating 
a long wing champion like like Vladimir Klitschko in the way he did it, you know, in the way he, he had it, it's something amazing, and that's uh, where, where I stand it. And um, I hope that fight happens soon, you know. And we don't know. I mean, I don't know how soon. I, I hope it could be sooner than 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 all these plans that they announced. But um, this boxing, this boxing, we can't do nothing too much about it. How much longer do you think Anthony Joshua will be able to keep a hold of the belt until there's maybe a clash of mandatories being called by different governing bodies? Look, we're flexible. That's why sometimes we get criticized on one side, but at the same time, we're sometimes we are flexible enough to have a one of the best fighters in the world proved himself against the other champions with our concept of super championships. You know, it's that question that's out of my field because uh, there are other organizations that don't think the same way that they, they want to have one champion and, and they go through it. It's very difficult to understand, make the fans understand how important for a fighter is a belt. You know, they have to understand that a belt means for them an increase of, of the wages or the salary he could get, you know, on the on rise. That, that's a tough one. But, um, you know, uh, you know we, we have to work together. I try to speak with the presidents, but sometimes it's very difficult. I'll put you an example. IBF didn't approve the uh, Inoue fight against um, Emmanuel Rodriguez. And then at the, at the end, if you look at it theoretically, he's still an unified champion, despite he was not the highest ranked champion of, of the WBA. So there are things, you know, there are some uh, wrinkles that should be iron between organization. That's one Word I tried to exhort the other president to try to sit down and find find something to happen. You know, something that we can agree upon. Well, Goberto, I appreciate your time. Thank you for speaking to Boxing Social. Yeah, thank you. You know, it's my pleasure to be you know sharing some ideas and talking about my passion, which is boxing.